I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting today for the um, assets and infrastructure um, first meeting for the session. And, uh, looking at the roof at the moment. I'd like to um, open the meeting, first of all, to call for any apologies. Um, I think we've got David Prentice on the uh, Zoom, have we? Um, Not, he's, come, he's coming, probably. No apologies. Apology Joe Stringer, yes. Now, for no further apologies, would someone like to move with Joe? All the apologies be accepted. Thanks. Thanks, Richard and Peter Neville. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, it's great. Right, we've got a reasonably long um, agenda, but I think most of it's pretty straightforward. Um, First of all, is the adequacy of fencing around the Matera and Waikaka oxidation ponds. Um, there was a query brought up at a prior meeting and uh, there's some photos there showing what is, uh, exists. And um, is there any comments on that? If not, um, that that report be received. Thanks, Brett. Seconder, Ben, thank you. Those in favour, please say aye. Uh, David, welcome to the meeting. We're just, just kicking off and um, you can hear us all right. Thank you. We've just had a comment about the uh, fencing around the ponds after a um, uh, query earlier on and we've, there's some photos there showing the f adequate fencing we've put in since the um, incident. Next one is the Three Waters update from the Assets and Infrastructure Committee. Um, it's quite a long report. Does Jason like to comment on it? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just the only real uh, comment, I'll just take the, the report as read. Uh, any comment uh, or update f uh, from a Otago Southland uh, regional meeting yesterday was that I understand um, there has been some traction around a uh, chief executive for the for Entity D, and so I understand that um, that will be announced um, in the near future. Um, the only other thing, maybe, would whether um, uh, Councillor Hovell or, or um, Chief Executive Mr. Perry like to comment in terms of um, what any updates from the rural provincial. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, you, um, <clears throat> Councillor Hovell and I, as you uh, correctly pointed out, did attend the rural and provincial meeting in Wellington uh, on um, Thursday and Friday last week. Uh, the meeting, it's fair to say, that was dominated by the events of um, Cyclone Gabriel and the impact felt by those councils that uh, bore the brunt of that vicious event. And so, yeah, it did dominate proceedings, but a highlight certainly was the um, free and frank exchange of views with the, the new minister, um, Kieran McAnulty, uh, who I think brings to the table uh, a pragmatic sense of authority in trying to get things done, uh, and also uh, a willingness to listen, engage, and certainly from my humble perspective, uh, he seems to be a guy that is uh, in reasonable command of his portfolio and not um, tied to a, a prepared script uh, and is free to answer a lot of questions. I guess what I took out of his uh, remarks to the, the um, gathering was that uh, there is going to be some changes in the Three Waters policy space. Obviously, it's an area of high, with a high degree of... Um, uh, uh, contention and dissension uh, and around the country and uh, w one of the things that um, the Minister McInulty pointed out was trying to 
uh, and any change of the reform process. And he didn't go into details, and he actually did say that uh, Cyclone Gabriel had really um, distracted um, resources or diverted resources to, to obviously to where they were needed, and he was hoping to be in a position to perhaps outline some proposed changes, but um, that wasn't the case because of the, the uh, disruptive effect of Cyclone Gabriel. But what he did hint at was that he was looking at uh, changes so that uh, the concerns around the loss of a local voice uh, could be meaningfully addressed in um, making some changes to the, uh, the proposals that have been widely uh, disseminated and, you'd have to argue, widely criticised. Um, it didn't give too much away apart from that, but you did get the impression that he's a guy that uh, is, uh, lives in a rural area of New Zealand in Wairapa. He's the MP for Wairapa uh, and has uh, a good handle on the issues around the country and made mention that uh, he had previously, when he was an associate minister, had conducted a tour of all, all councils in New Zealand, which took some three months. Um, so we wait with interest. But clearly, I think there will be some changes uh, in the current policy setting, but whether they go sufficiently far enough to uh, appease those that have strong concerns about what's being proposed is a moot point. Councillor Hovell may have more to add on that point. I thought that summary was very fair and um, deals with all the issues. Thank you. Thank you, um, Steve and Keith. Um, there's one comment, there's lots of acronyms to get your head around, and there's probably lots of um, uh, work to be pushed through before we can hit the deadline, but it'll be interesting to see if they make it. And there's an election in between. Um, was someone moved that that report be received? Thanks, Stuart. No? Any seconder? Any more, any other comments? Second to Richard, is it? Thanks. Those in favour of this report be received, please say aye. Okay, it's carried. We'll move on to um, the desludging at the pond. Um, does Matt would like to comment on this one? Or? Yes. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I guess just, um, I'll take the report as read, um, but just a bit of an update in terms of progress on site over the last few weeks. So. Um, the containment fund for the sludge is now uh, fully complete um, and the desludging contractor is establishing on site as we speak. So um, I guess we're expecting some sludge to start being removed um, either late this week or early next week. So that's all pretty pleasing progress. Um, yeah, happy to take any questions on the report. Is there any questions for Matt? I do have one, is, is sort of um, the juggling act with the money, is, does that going to, um, we need to look probably at that at the wider sphere of also the consent overrun too, um, whether that is going to be covered or is that, cons is, which we'll see in the further item, but. Sorry, are you referring to the uh, consent renewal yeah. project? Yeah, yeah, and, and certainly, yeah, we, I guess, um, as part of the, the annual plan process, um, I guess there's a, a chance to look at things um, from a global perspective as, as to where our spending is and things like that. It's just that we need this, um, need to give the, the contractor this clear direction now, um, which doesn't quite align with the annual plan timeframes is, is probably the key thing um, that's, that's caused the juggling. Comment from Keith, thanks. I'm not a member of the committee, but to me, uh, there's, there's something that doesn't quite stack up. And the, with regard to the additional funding that has been referred to, um, to allow further work to be done, um, what has been described is that the existing tower um, doesn't need to come down now because we consider that there isn't the same safety issue. And uh, if that's the case, why can't it stay um, full stop? Secondly, it says that there is a saving to be made because the tower is not coming down now, but we want to spend that money next year. Now, that's not a saving. 
nor, nor do I believe that this committee nor council can actually pass a resolution that a project be put in next year's annual plan at this stage. From, from my perspective, if, if, if the money is to be um, declared surplus because the tower doesn't need to come down, I think we need to go through an exercise to see where the priority lies for spending it. And I'm not 100% certain that it should be spent on removing sludge, given some other financials that are referred to in this report. If we've got a comment from your financial advisor, <laughs> Lene. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Mr Chair. I think the, the issue that the Three Waters and Asset Manager is raising is more around the practicalities of, you know, this is one of those ones that needs to be looked at in isolation in the sense that we've got a contractor on site, they've got the ability to take out double the amount and actually make it future-proof the project a little bit more and save some funds long term rather than being double the cost and having them back and spend another two million plus inflation. Why would we not get double the amount out and spend another 450 to 250,000? Um, the Three Waters Asset Manager, when he was looking at this, had a look at the program and looked at what he could defer or push out, and that we could look at other options when it came to annual plan and, and the LTP coming forward, going forward if Three Waters was still to be in the council control in the LTP process. But, you know, this, the, they are, whilst they're connected, there's still the issue at hand that Matt is referring to is um, a, a time-sensitive one. <coughs> I'd like to hear. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, thanks, uh, John. Just through you to, to Matt. So, Matt, apart from being, anecdotal, being anecdotal, what what is the risk of of us under underdoing the removal of volume? Like, if looking at the report, the volumes increased significantly over the years with the um, high level of confidence with the assessments. If we if we go short, what are the risks, real risks, to council with those plans? Through the chair, um, so I guess the risk of, of around the, the sludge build up is, is a um, decrease in performance of the ponds um, and potentially odour issues. Um, I think as has previously been discussed, we haven't seen that um, with our treatment plant at this stage. Um, and yeah, I guess um, with the, the first stage, or the, with the already committed amount of sludge being removed, um, that's, it's going to be a significant portion of sludge to be removed. Um, and so I guess the risk will be relatively low in the short term, but it's more around the medium term um, and, um, and how soon we might need to do that next phase of, of desludging. So um, you want, you, it might be that, that we need to do it much sooner than we think. Um, and I guess, yeah, the, the, um, the real driver behind doing it now is that, as everyone's aware, um, you know, th these things, the, the cost associated with these things always go up. And so if we're back doing more desludging work in, um, in the medium term, it, we can expect to pay significantly more um, than, than what we would have to pay if we, if we do it now. Um, I guess one thing that I will add is... Um, we have now received um, the uh, feasibility assessment for um, the long list of options for the wastewater consent um, renewal project. Um, and um, based on that, and it, it obviously it's, it's only a draft um, and needs to be put through the working group and things like that, but it is looking, I guess, more and more likely that the oxidation ponds will form part of the long-term future of Gore's wastewater treatment, uh, which yeah, I guess is reasonably significant in terms of um, if we're wanting to remove more sludge. Thank, thanks, Matt. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> guess further, further that, um, I suppose the question's been posed around priorities to you. Mm. Is, is this an absolute priority in your view as manager of the three waters area? Um, Without confusing the water tower issue, put that to one side. Um, if it was an additional budget that was absolutely necessary, is, is this the is this the priority? Uh, through the chair, it's it's always a tricky one because um, you, you can never quite tell. Um, you know, I guess if you're comparing it to a say a pipeline that's in bad condition, you never quite know how long that pipeline is going to last for. 
Um, but I guess um, you know, our, our treatment plants, both water and wastewater, uh, are probably our, our most significant assets. Um, and um, you know, I'd, I'd put water at the highest priority as, as that provides drinking water, which is you know, probably um, slightly more important, but wastewater would come a close second in terms of you know, if, if it's not operating effectively, um, you know, we can have some pretty significant environmental consequences and, um, and you know, some, there's some legislative requirements to make sure that they perform well. So it is probably right up there to make sure that um, our, our wastewater treatment plant is operating as, as effectively as possible. So based on that, I would say it's a reasonably high priority. Yeah. Neville. Yes, oh, David, okay. That's a good question. Um, we'll, we'd like to hear from some more committee members for first. Yes. Neville. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I'm on the same uh, uh, wavelength as yourself, David. And, and the question I have is um, through, you, through the Chair and Matt is how far through are we with the changeover from the pumps from the tower? Through the chair, um, so there's a, an update provided and further on in the agenda around that yep. project. Um, so we're now, um, <coughs> the, the design is um, largely complete for the pump station and we've engaged uh, contractors for the pump station relocation. Uh, so the next so the steps in that project would be um, to get in a building consent application. Right. Um, and I'd expect the building to, to probably be underway in the next say six to eight weeks. So they physically haven't started yet, have they? No. No. So what I ponder is, what is the greatest risk? And I know that we pointed out that the tower at the moment is a health and safety risk. But it also, it is a great risk if our ponds aren't desludged properly. Um, being a, a ex-wastewater operator, I understand the methodology of, of an oxidation pond and how bad it can get really quickly and I don't think that we've got the opportunity if we were to have a mishap to be able to work our way out of it and the cost alone would be probably more than what it would be to put down a tower. So I think I'm on the on the side of staff and that that we defer the the demolishing of the tower and that we actually create a, a no-go zone around the tower by fencing it. And I think that would probably mitigate our health and safety risk a little more than what we have currently and separate the whole tower from, from the actual area. And I think that would probably be cheaper in the long term at the moment. That's just a thought. We also have the... Um Three waters coming in next year, and whether we're going to have, be able to have control of this in 12, virtually just about 18 months' time, yeah, or even less. Yeah, yeah well, I appreciate that, the Chair. I, I think if we continually think about the three waters coming in all the time, we're never ever going to uh, get to the future because at the moment we still haven't built the reservoir up there, we still haven't got the pumps changed over, 
we still haven't got the bridge and the water going across the main, the, the main from our main water plant. So we've still got a lot of work and a lot of thinking to do before, uh, before anything happens. And, and yes, we've got to ponder a, a lot in the meantime about what is the priorities, because yes, we're fast running out of money. And that's, that's a serious thing. Yes, debt de ceiling is a, is a big issue over all those projects. Um, ben. Thank you. Through you, Mr Chair, I just wanted to ask the CFO um, just for clarity. Next annual plan, are we going to have to find that $450,000 again? Like, if we spend it on the desludging now, are we going to have to try and find that? Or is that allocated? Okay, so, so we would have to find that completely. Right. So it's not just switching project timelines. Um, right. It is completely redoing the annual plan to find the money for the tower again. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. The, because this is a new a new part, it will be additional. Um, so anything we defer will require additional um, for us to find the money from somewhere else or to increase rates. Thanks. Okay, man. I just have a question. The, the tower, has it just got a bit of concrete falling off it now and then? Is it structurally unsafe? Is it going to fall over? What I understand, structurally it is very safe and it's, mm. and it's got a good earthquake rating, but it has got problems with concrete um, dropping off or scaling of it dropping off and frost and wet weather. And hitting somebody on the head if they're standing underneath it. Yeah, but that's why it's fenced off. So yeah. it's, it's not structurally no. going to fall over at the moment. Is that right, Matt? Yeah. Through the chair, yes, that's right. Um, yeah, so we've previously had a, a structural assessment completed on it, which, which didn't identify any significant um, concerns around um, earthquake strength, um, but it is that, that spool and concrete from the top of the tower um, and the potential that to fall on someone in close vicinity to the tower. Thank you. Richard. Yes, just for your chair, obviously everyone's having a crack at this one. Um, and the <laughs> When we, when we look at it, we've actually got two, two, different, uh, two, two separate things that have merged, which is causing us the issue Three. around the fact that we have the, uh, the tower being merged with trying to find that money with the desludging. De I think uh, Councillor Phillips has probably hit it on the head. We can't ignore the fact that we, we have actually publicly sat here and talked about a health and safety issue around uh, one of our, our um, items that are under our control. Should something happen, we are liable. So we do need to take some action. We do need to do some sort of um, remedial or uh, barricades, fencing type situation to alleviate that. But I do look at the fact that uh, we um, have the desludging issue there as well. So I'd be happy to support the sludging matter, but we need to take some sort of rehabilitative or change action to the existing structure of the tower. Um, we did recognise that before. We've, we've documented that, we've discussed it, we can't ignore that and suddenly decide we're not going to do anything about it at all for another year because I think the liability factor would be too high and we've seen that. Just a question for Matt, it is fenced now, isn't it? Through the chair, yes. Um, there is a, um, I guess a, a barricade that's been put up around it um, and yeah, potentially if it was gonna remain for longer, we could make that a bit more permanent um, as part of that works, one of the main things we did is we diverted the access road away from the, the water tower, uh, the access road into the water treatment plant. So um, there's no, previously there was a requirement to drive quite close to the tower to get into the water plant, but we've diverted that road away. So there's, um, yeah, it's reducing the, the potential for staff to need to go in, in that area. So, yeah, Richard? Yeah, probably, the, the matter is, is as if we have had taken satisfactory steps to ensure if anything happens, um, we don't want to be liable. So I have no issues with the, the two merging, but um, we have clearly said we have a health and safety issue on one of our structures and we need to ensure we've taken every, every uh, means to uh, avert it or if something happens, if we're put up, placed under scrutiny, we would withstand it. I think someone needs to probably form a motion that covers if we do do the swap round, we need to have secure fencing around the tear. Ben. 
So you, Mr Chair, to, to further that point, if we were to get to that stage where we could securely fence it and the likes of WorkSafe and everyone are happy, how long realistically are we able to defer the demolition of the water tower? Or does it really depend on the, con you know, the weather conditions over the next couple of years? Or does it really need to be done in the next year to two years? Can it only be deferred one year? Through the Chair, I don't believe we, when they, we had the structural assessment done, there was any sort of strict time frames discussed or raised. Um, yeah, so I, I guess that's something we'd have to look into and, and consider further. I guess to further that point, that the reality with the current um, economic crisis uh, and cost of living is we're going to struggle to find that money this rating cycle um, with the impeding rate increase. So the likelihood of it getting delayed yet another year is quite high, I would, I would imagine. Um, yeah, I guess just wanted to make councillors aware of that, I guess. Would someone, any other councillors that haven't spoken like this say something? Glenis, Paul? Stuart? Paul? I just look at them. Yeah, Paul. Look, there's, um, sorry, through the chair, there's, there's, you can look at it either way. Um, it is, if it's a health and safety risk, we have got to be seen to be acting on that. Um, it's nice to be able to put, stop something and, and work on something that's actually going to be needed now, which is the desludging. Um, I think the only way you can do is if you want to move on is, is work on that, make a motion with the fence or protect the area, but you've got to work on a time frame there because we can't put it off forever, can we? Um, if we can, well then why are we looking at this? The other thing I'm trying to think of, it doesn't have to be done now, but I'm happy to go with the work through that as well. That's, that's decided. Thanks, thanks Paul. Um, Stuart, any comment? Just, uh, we, we just, I think, I can see Matt's point of wanting to do the whole thing now because you're, you're established and the, and the actual cost uh, will be a lot less doing the whole job now. But I think we just need to look at a, at a health and safety liability like everyone and said and make sure the place is well fenced off and uh, that we do get the program together to take this tower down if it's such a problem. Right, um, Brett, Brett the caveman. Yeah. Then yeah, we Mr should... Chairman, I just wonder if the way forward is, is without um, creating an administrative nightmare is to, the, the tower perhaps needs to be subject to a further report from staff like we're sitting here today without the report that was in front of the council that made the decision that it was a priority to demolish. Um, if there's alternative uh, health and safety remedies that can be put in place, um, cost escalation issues if we delay it. Um, but I, I agree with the sentiment that the two issues are probably merged when they're in fact quite, quite separate. separate. So that yeah. might be a way of separating the issues and going forward. Okay, man. Just a comment I have I'd like to give an example of, I know of a company, this is about liability, I know of a company that installed a bit of machinery way back in the day with the Labor Department. And this piece of machinery was checked over by the Labor Department as safe. A few years later, a gentleman injured themselves really badly on this. Now, some of the people will be familiar with the, this example. And the owners of that bit of machinery got prosecuted big time even although it had been approved by the Labor Department. So what I'm saying is health and income or somebody like that might say, yes, that's fine the way you've got it done, but if something still happens, they will run away and hide and say, you're still liable. That's just my point of saying, if work and income said, yes, that's fine, and then some, something still happens, you're still liable. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, it comes, it's looking like we'll need to um, alter the motion a bit. Um, we can re receive, receive the report. Demolition of the Hillbury Ave water tear be deferred until 24-25. Financial year, I think that needs to be changed. 
and um, we need to look at a report on the tear and what we can do to make it safe. And the final bit, that the budget for the desludging project be increased by 450,000 for an additional sludge to be removed from the pond at the, gore, at the treatment plant, for the treatment plant, needs to be thought, I think, almost postponed till we get a report on the tear and, then, and how soon we need to knock it over, or if we can make it safe. Ben. I, I agree with that. I just wanted to ask Matt in terms of time frames, uh, just acknowledging they are desludging now. Um, how long have we got to make this decision? Not long. Through the chair, um, yeah, I was just thinking that. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, the discussions that we've had with the desludging contractor to date have been that we would be able to give them a, a pretty steer, uh, clear steer after this meeting. Um, so I don't know that we've got a lot of time to make that decision. Um, be preferable if we could get a decision at this meeting. Um, but I can have another chat to the contractor um, and see, um, yeah, see whether we can defer that decision. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, oh. um, Steve. Mr. Chair, I just wonder whether, uh, to help the meeting about this, this dilemma, that whether you should focus on the need for desludging of the oxidation ponds and the need for increasing the budget and make a decision on that, given that uh, with the trajectory of three waters reform, um, the ability for the council to actually uh, have a second bite of the cherry through the three waters entity and to further desludge may be limited for possibly as long as five years. So I wonder whether the committee should focus on the, the merits of doing an uh, extra desludge, albeit with an increased budget limit, make that recommendation to the full council, and then at the same time, uh, the three waters manager and the general manager corporate support can then report on uh, funding or substitution options, which may include the uh, water tower or may include some other things. Um, that might be the best way forward uh, because without that uh, you've got a prob potentially a lost opportunity with the contractor on site and ready to do more work. Thanks Steve. Um, so would someone like to uh, change a mo change a motion or do you want to proceed as proceed as there? Have we got any motion? Neville. I'm quite happy with the recommendation the way it's written that we report the re report uh, that the report be received that the demolishment of Hill Reeve and Water Tower be deferred to 2024, uh, waiting a further report from staff, and that the budget be sludging project be increased by 450,000 to allow additional sludge to be removed from the pond one of the Gore wastewater treatment plant. You Neville's moving that. Is there a seconder? Stuart, you second that. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Richard, comment. Just confirming that motion we just voted on, um, which was rather quick. Uh, <laughs> demolition, d demolition. So we're actually state, stating, just clarify. We're stating we are going to defer, regardless. That the demolishment of Hilby Ave and Water Tower be deferred to until 2024-25 financial year and waiting for a further report from staff. That will give us an indication that maybe we need to go sooner True. than 2024-25. Okay. Okay. No, or fine. whatever it might be. Or where, pending, the, money, or where, the, money, yeah, where yeah. the money may come from. So we, we need to tag on that to report here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, is that, is that what we were sort of wanting? Yeah. yeah. Through you, Mr Chair, and we take it, <clears throat> I think the recommendation wasn't quite that, but we will take it that yes. the staff will uh, send a report with this minutes, with these minutes to the full council yeah. on um, options in respect of how two, two things, 
how we bridge the gap of 450 and address any health and safety issues in the interim regarding if the um, water tower is uh, postponed because of course this committee only has recommendatory powers yeah. and the full council can if need be finesse any recommendation before it becomes a resolution yes thank you ceo because it seemed to just we merged we merged two two out, outcomes there that yeah. have got a little bit of gray area so just make sure we record that thank you chairman if people are happy still with that motion um with the addition that there be a report on the water tear and it's still got to be passed by council so i think we'll probably end up going in circles again <laughs> thanks brett i think the minutes will capture the health and safety aspects that aren't in the motion yeah. it'll be nice to have been in there but that's uh, certainly in the body of the comments thank you no more comments on that item We'll move on to climate change uh, working group update from Jason. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, this is just a, an update for the group. I will take the um, uh, the report as read. Uh, this is just on on the basis of work that has been occurring over the past sort of four months, uh, following uh, some regional discussions around climate change um, as of uh, July 2022. Um, an update on this since um, the writing of this report, um, the Regional Climate Change Governance Group um, also met, which uh, Councillor Hovell and I uh, attended, uh, and that really is just, I guess, the first step in trying to um, uh, bring some, bring to light some of these issues around climate change and the, the ever-increasing need uh, for us as a region to be um, working uh, together to address some of those issues. So happy to take any, any questions or if um, Ms. Councillor Hovell wants to make a, a comment, i sure he will. I just had, just had one comment, Jason, was um, the later LODAR report has been a long time coming. It's a bit like another report we had for, um, that was flowing over for water and uh, we haven't seen it yet. Um, before Jason replies on the LIDAR um, information, I, I attended the meeting as he referred to. And the objective really is for the territorials and the regional council to work together to have a common uh, approach to climate change issues. And that will feed into um, what's required under the new environmental legislation as well. But at the same time, it does not remove the need for us as a council to prepare our own climate change strategy in terms of how the council itself responds and in terms of some of the uh, uh, other issues uh, that, that impact on the district. And that's something that um, I guess is part of the district plan review and as part of the um, planning or policy and planning committee um, will be following up on those issues. Thank you. Any, any comment on the report? Yeah. No, just comment on the LIDA, yes, uh, Mr Chairman, um, it has been uh, a long time coming. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's something that has been, I guess, out of the direct control of the, the councils that have been desiring this, and it's just been a, a schedule that has occurred and depending on, on, on weather and other bits and pieces. But now that that has com been completed, uh, we are hopeful that we can get that information um, back to the region and so we can actually start to use that to form uh, some meaningful data that can really start to inform decision making from this point forward. So um, we are again uh, just acknowledge that we are pressing Environment Southland uh, around that because there's some key uh, in terms of the key work to come out of that certainly uh, flood modelling um, will be really critical uh, for this district in terms of um, what, uh, what, we, what we can expect and how we best prepare to, um, to adapt to that. Thank you. Any more? Jen, uh, Glenis. Grab mm, keys. Oh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, there was a carbon um, neutral advantage group set up that did a lot of work around um, carbon 
and how we could mitigate that. Is that going to merge with this group? Because there's quite a lot of data there that um, Steve Kenny set up that group and I was part of that. Uh, just through the chair, um, the uh, Great South, in terms of the work they have done, um, will certainly feed into that uh, group uh, long term. Um, part, as you'll see in the report there, one of the, uh, the steps for, for this council will be um, reporting uh, on our own um, carbon footprint or baseline, as it were. Um, and that's a piece of work that we will be looking to um, undertake um, as soon as we can. Um, but yes, certainly there'll be a, um, a need to work closely with uh, Great South around that, and we have had discussions up to this point about their support through this process as well. Thank you. No further comments on that report. We'll, would someone move that that report received? received? Uh, Paul, thanks. Um, just seconded by Stuart. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, it's carried. Um, next, we'll move on to there's a report from the um, roading. Hang on. Three Waters and Roading Bulletin. Um, it's information to be received. Um, the only comment I had was um, the well levels look all right, but how come we ran out of water in one well? In the Jacobstown well, there's a report further on to say we're sucking near. Yeah. Uh, through your chair, um, the Jacobstown well that went um, dry or low was our backup supply. We were doing maintenance on the main well. Um, when that happened, we. Um, got that one fired back up pretty quickly. So, yeah. Mate, thanks very much. Yeah. Would someone like to move that? Any other comments on those reports? Rodi and Richard. Just interested, 6.5% um, increase in the water usage in Matara. What does that equate to? Is it leaks or of, uh, people bathing in the street or, you know, like <laughs> the heat? Um, there's no... No rhyme or reason because I see Gore stayed the same, and obviously we're going through the hot spell. But Matera's gone up. So uh, through your chair, yeah. Councillor Phillips may be able to help us. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I can make a comment, but it's not very nice. Um, we were concerned that there may have been leaks, um, and we're about to um, get the leak detection investigation team in. Uh, we had one day of rain and cold weather and consumption dropped. Um, so that indicated that it's not leaks. Just a hot summer. Yeah. Thank you. Brett. Oh. We're discussing both, both roading and yeah. waters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just through you, Mr Chairman, there's a question to Murray on page 30, the, the pedestrian crossing on railway Espinar. Um, it'd be great to get an update on that. I see you've done a, some work for Kiwi Rail. Is there any further information for us? Committee. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I've recently um, uh, uh, um, got a quote from WSP for the uh, for the uh, design of the um, the, the median uh, that's required there <coughs> on the on railway Esplanade itself. Um, uh, so w what I need that for is to take that to both the um, the Mountain Bike Club and the uh, East Coast School uh, for consultation. <coughs> um, so uh, I'm, I'm awaiting uh, a result from that. Um, but it, our intention still is to, to do that work before the end of this financial year. Thank you. I just asked Kiwi Rail, was, what was the feedback from Kiwi Rail around that uh, um, piece of work? You said you've recently done a report um, to gain approval. A rail crossing assessment was carried out. Uh, so the Kiwi Rail, um, the um, Kiwi Rail were uh, had, had, there was a assessment done. Uh, Kiwi Rail were part of that assessment uh, along with a um, specialist consultant, um, 
and the outcome of that was that they uh, approved basically of the um, proposed uh, pedestrian crossing. Uh, and that will be further enhanced by the, um, the fencing that uh, has been, uh, we've, we've received funding for from the uh, Betterment Fund. Uh, that wasn't a requirement of, of KiwiRail, but normally they do require that sort of fencing, so it was a surprise that they didn't require it. Uh, but that will further enhance the, the um, acceptance of it. <coughs> Thank you. No further comments? Ben. Just more of a, through you Mr Chair, more of a broad question to Murray. Um, with the contract uh, with Fulton Hogan coming to an end, the road maintenance contract coming to an end at the 30th of September um, and switching to K2 contracting, have you seen a noticeable change um, in the, the maintenance? Um, either an improvement or a, or a degradation? Or is it yeah, relatively the same? Uh, through Mr Chair, it's probably pretty similar because K2 were the, did most of the physical work under the previous contract and the contract specification is, is very similar to um, the previous contract. Um, there is a, a, a slight increase in the cost of, of some of the work, uh, but that's in line with the, um, the cost, and play, cost fluctuation sort of um, increases that have been experienced right across the board in the in the contracting area so the the standard um, is uh, yeah as say is similar possibly slightly better but um, yeah thank you um, someone like to move that that those reports be received Richard and Brett seconded those in favor please say aye against Carried. Project Register is the next on the agenda. Um, Matt, are you going to comment on that? Through the Chair, um, yeah, i just, I guess, um, explain for those that haven't seen this before that this is, a, I guess, a, a global overview of all our Three Waters capital projects um, and there's obviously a um, specific update report for each project following following on in the agenda. Um, so there's a chance to ask questions about specific projects um, as we go through each individual report. Um, but I guess from a, a global perspective, um, there is really quite a lot of uh, work going on at the moment in, this, in the capital works space for Three Waters. Um, there's a bit of a struggle to stay on top of it at the moment, um, and we're expecting to be pretty busy um, for at least the next six months, just um, making sure that we do stay on top of all this work. Uh, look, looks, a bu looks a busy schedule. I'm just saying we're starting to feel the impact of the traffic movements on the main street already. Yep. Um, yeah, just on that too, I think I'd just take the chance, I don't know if uh, councillors have met, but. Um, sitting down the uh, end of the table by uh, Aaron is our new uh, project engineer, Terry Trotter. Uh, so Terry started with us uh, about a month ago now, Terry, and um, is certainly in, so he's uh, working with Matt to help uh, uh, filling in from the uh, change of roles with Aaron moving across to uh, operations manager. So um, it's good to have that additional resource there uh, also, and just to, uh, nice to put a uh, name to the face for those that haven't met Terry already. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Um, do you want to go flick through those one by one? We'll flick through the reports then. Elizabeth Street service upgrade. Getting pretty well through. Yeah. Through the chair, yes. So, um, you yeah, know, um, progress over the last couple of weeks since I wrote the report. Um, so the mains in Elizabeth Street are now all complete um, and uh, reinstatement um, of the of the carriageway um, will be occurring over the next couple of weeks in Elizabeth Street. Um, and then there's just some um, property connections in Joseph Street to be done. Um, and Fulton Hogan will also be starting on the construction of the infiltration basin at the intersection of um, Elizabeth Street and Broughton Street, um, possibly in the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, it is um, 
really all sort of coming together um, well on the project now, finally. Um, and yeah, we're slowly working through the private property separation works. Um, I guess the main constraint there is um, the um, availability of the local plumbing resources. Um, so just working through those as, as resources allow. Thank you. No comments on that one. We'll move, move on to the East Gore Water Treatment Plant. The next one is it? Someone would like someone to receive that report. Richard, thank you. Second to Neville. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. East Gore Water Treatment Plant um, coming to its really finality. Yeah. Just a few hatches with noise. Through the chair, yes, yep, just that um, that noise issue, really the, the final thing we need to work through on that project. So. No questions on that? Someone would like to move that we receive that report? Thanks, Brett. Seconder. Stuart? Those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Wigham Street, wastewater and mains replacement. Um, quite a major project. Through the chair, yes. Um, yeah, so as of yesterday, um, work on site has now started on this project. Um, and as, as the chair mentioned earlier, possibly seeing some impacts um, around the diversion of the heavy traffic bypass, um, which will be in place for a few weeks. Um, obviously need to try and get that work done as quickly as possible to minimise those impacts. Um, but yeah, happy to take any questions on that. Neville. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, just one thing, Matt, I noticed that the trucks are still driving right through the main street, um, completely driving right through, rather than crossing over uh, and then going down the back way to the bridge. So they're going right across the main street and then turning at the police station to the bridge. So maybe we need a bit more signage on there. I think that's correct. Yeah. Um, through, through you, Mr Chair, I'll... I'll um, answer that one. So um, we, we've got two uh, detour routes. Uh, the northbound traffic is going uh, up the full length of the main street and turning at the police station uh, onto Midway Street. Um, and the uh, southbound traffic is turning onto River Street, the, the um, normal heavy traffic bypass, and then turning into Mersey Street and coming out onto the main street uh, at uh, Mersey Street. Um, we we uh, we had to do it that way because the there's quite River Street is quite narrow um, and there was a, an issue with um, potential uh, potentially uh, having um, trucks uh, on northbound trucks uh, at the Mersey Street River Street intersection uh, having to go over the centre line to to turn out of there um, so we we split them uh, as as you've uh, just described. Thank you, Murray. No further comments on that project? Someone would like to remove that, re, re, receive that report? Ben and Stuart. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Um, we'll flick on to the Wigan Fleet Renewal. Dead sludging of the um, rock station ponds. We've probably actually had a fair old hammer at that, but. Do we need to cover anything else on that? No further comments? Someone move that we receive that report? And Stuart, a seconder, and Richard. For those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. Um, Gore and Matera Wastewater Consent Renewals Project Update. Um, through the chair. Um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we've now got the um, draft feasibility assessment of the long list options for this project. Um, and that has been circulated to the technical working group um, to consider. Uh, so we're aiming to have a, a meeting uh, with the technical working group in late March. 
um, to, to consider the findings of that feasibility assessment. Um, and from there, we're expecting to be able to take um, a recommended shortlist of options for further investigation um, back to both um, the elected members of council as well as the Hokanui uh, Runanga Leadership Group for approval. Um, so I'm expecting that will be sort of around late April, early May. Let me bring that to you for, for approval. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Neville. Just the one question. How's the uh, finance going, the budget? Uh, through the chair, uh, it's, um, up until now it's been fine, although we have um, been having some discussions with the consultant around the additional work that they've had to do for the feasibility assessment. Um, it's only been informal discussions at this stage um, and we're expecting um, them to provide something more formal in writing over the coming days um, and um, potentially we'll bring that to the council or the committee sooner rather than later. Because we're sort of looking at it about 20% overrun, is it? 120,000? Yeah, 122. 20. That's an estimate though, isn't it? That's an estimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through the chair, yeah. So, um, we, yeah, as, as I say, we, um, we haven't got um, all the details at this stage around the cost that of, the, of the work that's recently been completed. Um, but as soon as we do, we'll, we'll look to bring something to uh, the committee or the, or the full council. Um, I guess on that it is, um, when, when we do get the, the identified short list of options, uh, that will give us a much clearer indication as to what further investigation work we need to do around those options um, and the costs and, and time frames and things like that for the, I guess, the second half of this project leading into um, a, submitting a consent application to Environment South. And so we're sort of at, the, at that point where we, we can start looking at, at you know, a more accurate um, cost um, to complete the project um, over, over the next sort of two or three months. Yeah. Just a question I had is whether we've been the guinea pigs to set the global standards or are we the forf at the forefront of doing it uh, or why hasn't this been sort of sorted on a national scale? Yeah. The chair, I, I, I certainly wouldn't say we're the guinea pigs um, and I think um, you know, a lot of this uh, wastewater disposal to land um, has become more and more common probably over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, perhaps more common the further north you go. Um, so perhaps we're, we're the guinea pigs for, um, for the lower South Island maybe. Um, but in saying that, um, I know that SDC have worked through some pretty significant consents recently and, um, and had to go down this process. So, yeah, it is certainly becoming pretty common. Yeah, Matera, uh, Manipur and Tiana went through it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul? Um, David? Through the chair, uh, yes, yeah, so um, obviously one of the, the um, key stakeholders, or most significant key stakeholders in the, in the um, process is the, is the Hokanui Runanga, um, and they are heavily involved in the working group. Um, I guess I can't speak on their behalf, but um, my impression and understanding is they're very happy with the process that's been followed um, and support um, where we're at at the moment. Um, I guess a bit of an indication around that will be when we do present this uh, shortlist, 
uh, recommended shortlist and and um, and if we can get agreement from both the Hokanui Renanga leadership team as well as the elected members, then that'll be a, a, a really good sign that we're heading in the right direction. Thank you, Matt. Would someone like to move that we receive that report? Stuart. A seconder? Brett. Those in favour, please say aye. Against? It's carried. Matera River Crossing project update. It's a gnarly one. Yeah, through the chair. Um, yeah, I guess since, since uh, the council last um, considered this at the, at the last council meeting, we've we've been uh, working through uh, the community engagement details and, and putting together material for that. Um, and we're expecting to table a report at the March council meeting uh, regarding the community engagement and, and the process that we'll be following for that. Happy to take any questions in the report. Any any questions for that report? Brett. Yeah, probably not a question, but just a note on page 56, just noting that the process is likely to take us to the point that we need agreement with DIA as to where we go. Do we understand what that looks like yet or not? Through the chair, uh, not specifically at this stage, yeah. Um, and I think the time to have those discussions would, 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 be, would be when we have a clear preference as to a bridge versus a pipeline and, and then we can, I guess, have a bit more meaningful discussion around um, yeah, what, what the approval process is going to look like. I think we've just got to um, wait as the community discussion goes through, I think, and keep your ears and eyes open and listen to people and their thoughts. Is there a uh, recommendation we receive that report? Um, someone like to move that? Stuart and Neville. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, it's carried. Um, Matera Water Treatment Plant upgrade. Through the chair. Um, yeah, so there's obviously, um, this is obviously another quite significant and important project that we've got on at the moment. Um, the contractor is now well and truly established on site and making reasonably good progress. Um, there's a lot to start, a lot is starting to happen on site, which is, which is pleasing to see. Um, a lot of materials and equipment um, now turning up on site ready for installation. A couple of the more significant things that will be happening over the next few weeks um, is the replacement of the McKelvey Heights tanks. Um, so that will require short shutdowns to that area of Matara uh, while they do a temporary um, changeover to a, a temporary water supply while they install the new tanks. Um, and the other significant thing is we get into the stage where once the peak summer demand period has passed, um, we'll be taking one of the filters out of service to start the, the filter refurbishment, which is a major component of the project. Um, and um, and yeah, we, I guess the key thing for that is we've, we've got to wait for the peak summer demand period um, to pass so that we can be sure that we can keep up with the water demand while only operating off a single filter. Uh, happy to take any questions on that. Any questions on the material, Neville? You take a keen interest. Uh, thanks, Mr Chairman. Uh, no, I just congratulate the staff for starting. Well done. It's been a long process. Um, just that uh, perhaps we, we might need uh, a little bit of publicity. Uh, we haven't seen seen much about um, to let the Matara residents know what's happening in, in Matara. You know, like we're spending a significant amount of money in uh, upgrading their uh, water plant and the reasons why we're doing it. So perhaps a bit of publicity wouldn't go astray, probably. No, good, good comment, Neville. We'll pass that on to Sonia. Um, would someone like to move that the report we received from Matera Water Treatment Plant? Stuart again, and it's Richard. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Um, last, we're getting down. Hilbury Ave Water Tear Demo Demolition Project. We've had a fair old go at this one, so I think 
not too much to comment on. Matt, is there? We'll probably Through the chair, yeah, so I guess just as I um, indicated earlier in the meeting, um, we've now engaged contractors for the various aspects of the pump station work um, and um, yeah, we'll expect to get a building consent application submitted sooner rather than later. Um, and then once that's processed, we'll start the, the construction of the building works. Um, there's potentially a, a wee bit of enabling works that we can get underway in the meantime. Um, but yeah, once, once we've got that building consent, we'll be um, sort of, um, once we get that, it'll allow the, the full construction works to get underway. So basically we haven't engaged a contractor for demolition though, have we? No. No. No, that's correct. Um, yeah, the, the plan was to get reasonably well progressed around the pump station re re relocation um, so that we've got certainty around time frames and things um, before we go out to tender for a, a, the demolition works. Thank you. Any more comments on that? We'll look forward to a report on how we're going to make it safe. <laughs> um, someone would like to move that report be received? Brett and a seconder. Stuart, those in favour, please say aye. Against, carry. Um, three Waters monthly compliance reports, assets and infrastructure. Oh, sorry, Chair. Oh, yep. Yeah. Hang on, yeah. Robert. Yeah, David. Oh, sorry. Could you just ask a question just before we move on the project? Through you, Chair? Yep. Uh, through you, Chair. Um, Is it the kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is just that making sure um, that we've got, um, we're, we're putting enough attention into where it needs to be. We're, we're, I guess we are having to prioritise and um, pick and choose where we spend our time and, and that sort of thing. Um, obviously having Terry come on board um, particularly once he gets up and running will, will be a big help um, but it's it's making sure that yeah we we do we're, we're across things um, sufficiently to make sure that we have have got a good understanding of of any risks or potential issues so that we can try and deal with them um, before they um, get too out of control um, and I guess the other thing is, is probably um, this, the, the Matau River Crossing project and, and getting a firm strategy in place for that um, because that obviously, um, as well as um, allowing the whole of Gore to have compliant drinking water, it also means that we can get on uh, with the, the, both the Hilbury Ave um, tower demolition and the replacement of the Hilbury Ave uh, reservoir, which is in, in pretty poor condition. Um, so it, w it would really be good to get some uh, certainty around that, that um, river crossing project and what we're going to do there. Does that cover what you after, David? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. 
Yeah, I, th I think just to add to that, and, and that probably is uh, probably the other thing that we've, we have been discussing is the, uh, the ability to deliver these on time and on cost. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the market um, and the challenges that uh, we face around these projects, um, you know, it certainly um, is, is putting a significant amount of uh, pressure on the team. But um, again, uh, Matt's doing a fantastic job with that. But um, again, we will be, I think in terms of where we sit, we will just try and be open and transparent with council um, uh, as we can with um, how the projects are, um, are moving. And uh, But um, yeah, there's certainly, as pointed out, it's a, it's a massive workload and uh, um, yeah, I just want to reiterate um, the, you know, the work that, that Matt has done uh, to this point and, this, and what lies in front of us over this next year, again with the tr transition of three waters around the corner. So, thanks, Matt. Yes, Matt. I congratulate Matt on doing, keeping all this all together. I think he's, he's doing very well. I just, could I just add a quick comment as well, just in terms of that, that transparency and communication. It's, it's a massive juggling act and I also commend you for, for the amazing work that you're doing, but if you do feel like those balls are going to drop, um, and I know Jason will keep us well on the loop, but that is something that council needs to know so that we can try and um, desperately find extra resource or whatever we need to do to, to help you out to make sure that those projects um, do get delivered on time and into the best quality. So, Thanks, Ben. Um, go back to Aaron. I know it looks like the new treatment plant's pumping out plenty of information. Uh, thank you, Your Chair. Um, these reports are a new requirement under Tamata Arawai um, for our monthly compliance that we must submit. Um, at the time of writing this report, um, the monthly reports were still uh, being developed, so there are some, some errors in there. Um, so at the next committee meeting, they'll be uh, all up now, the reports. Uh, happy to take any questions. Brett. Yeah, thanks, John. Just through you. Um, to Aaron, just w what is the risk to council with non-compliance? There's, there's good explanations given. Um, where does that does it lead anywhere, or is it is it um, just a case of being aware? No, uh, this report is is more just a case of being aware. Um, and if we are looking like we're going to be going non-compliant for those plants, um, for Hilbury Ave, where. We'd, as noted in there, we, we're not even attempting protozoa compliance because the plant's not up to it. Um, the Matara water treatment plant upgrade will bring that in line with the drinking water standards, so um, that's going to make a huge improvement for the Matara residents. Just one comment was the graph on page 73, the red line one. I just couldn't get my head quite around that one. Uh, that was just to prove that uh, we were compliant and it was a reporting issue um, on the reports being developed. Would someone, um, no further comments on that, would someone like to move that uh, this report be received? Mm -hmm. I'm just, just a question through you to, the, to Lornay. Was this the area where um, an audit and risk where we, where we had issues with the auditors around uh, quality of the information as opposed to the outcome of the information? Is this starting to move towards satisfying that area, Lornay? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, partially. <laughs> um, so part of, the part of the issues we had with the auditors was around response times and the data entry. So it was a purely a small data entry error with the timing of entering the information into our um, CRM system, which is our customer request management system. Um, and effectively what happens, uh, what was happening was uh, 
the BNFR has call or a weekend call and the staff would get it on a Monday to enter the information into the system and they would enter, incorrectly enter the Monday's date rather than the Saturday's date. So it was just making sure we're going back and checking those dates there around, um, around the capture of the customer requests um, and the time. So this, is, this does lead into some of the, some of the, um, some of the, some of the measures, but the ones that they had an issue with were around customer requests and data entry. This is one here is more around the protozoa and our agreements, our compliance with, with those. So it's, again, the, the standard ones set down by the New Zealand drink, Drinking Water Standard. Um, there's a set of, I think, five or eight, maybe. I can't remember off the top of my head, it's not my, not my forte. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a set of about eight there that are set down by the New Zealand Drinking Water Standards that we have to report on. And these, these are part of that but not a part of the ones that we got pinged for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we'll probably move that report. No. Okay, would someone like to move that report then? Brett and a seconder, Stuart. Those in favour, please say aye. Against, it's carried. I'd like to close this part of the meeting and um, we'll move into publicly excluded. Um, would someone like to move that? Ben, thank you, and Richard. Those in favour, please say aye. 